Hello, my name is Teacher Ed. Thank you so much for joining me on the channel today. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you also for liking and subscribing to this channel. I really appreciate that as well. So this is gonna be part two of our series all about fractions. And I said last time that I love fractions. I get excited when I talk about fractions, when I write fractions down, when I teach about fractions. I love fractions. And today we're gonna to talk more about fractions. So what did we do last time? Well, last time we said that fractions are going to be just showing part of a whole, uh, part of a whole or whole group. And we talked a lot about that word group. And we decided that a group was things that we put together. So like, for example, these pink squares. I have these pink squares over here. They are in, they're close together and they are a group. And we decided that there are 12 pink squares all together. And I also talked about different groups in my baskets here. I have a group here. This is a group of some balls and a pig all together. And then we have this group. This is some plastic eggs and a ball. And then we had another group over here. Uh, we had some chicks and we had a frog. And we also have another group right here where we have some clothespins and some fabric glue. So these are just some random items. I put them together and now they are in a group. So since we know what groups are, how can we show these groups in a fraction? So remember, fraction is going to have two numbers on it separated by what we call the fraction bar. So this is our fraction bar and we have two numbers. We have a top number and we have a bottom number. So what do you think each of those numbers means? What does the bottom number mean and what does the top number mean? Well, the bottom number means just how many there are all together. So we can remember the bottom number uh, as how many in all. How many are there in my group all together? So what about the top number? What does the top number mean? Well, remember the top number is just gonna be how many we're focused on. Like how many slices of pizza am I going to get? Or how many pieces of that chocolate bar? Or how many parts of a shape are shaded? Um, basically a good way to memorize that is going to be how many I get. So that bottom number is going to be how many in all. And that top number is going to be how many I get. For me, it's much easier to build the top, the bottom number first. So let's take a look at some of our groups and let's build some fractions using our groups. Let's take a look at this group right here. Do you remember this group? I have some balls and then I have a pig. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to count how many things in our, our, in our group all together. Let's go ahead and count them. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Remember, we include everything in our group and we found out that there are five things in our group. So let's go ahead and write that down on our bottom number. That's going to be five. So five things all together. So then for our top number, let's pick something that we can focus on out of this group. Let's pick the pig. What do you think? Let's pick how many pigs are in this basket. Well, how many pigs are there? Well, remember the easiest way to find out is to count them. This one will be pretty easy because I think there's just one pig in the basket, but let's just make sure. Ready? One. So there's one pig in this basket. So how many pigs are in the basket? One out of a group of five things all together. So I would just write the number one on top. So that means this fraction means I have one out of five. I have a group of five things all together. I'm just looking at one of them. Let's go ahead and erase this one. And let's look at another group that I have. Do you remember this group? Yeah, this is the one with the chicks and the frog in it. So do you remember how many things I had in this group all together? Remember, the easiest way to find out is to count them. So let's go ahead and count them. Ready? One, two, three. So how many things did I have in this group? 
That's right, I had three things all together. So we'll make our fraction bar and then our bottom number will be three because we had three things all together. So looking at our group again, what things should we focus on? Well, let's just look at the chicks and let's count how many chicks there are all together. Let's count them, ready? One, two. So how many chicks are there? That's right, there are two. So our top number is going to be two. So that means that I'm focused on two things out of a group of three. I have three things all together and all I care about is two of those or I'm focused on two of those. Let's take a look at one more of our groups. Do you remember this group? Right, this is the one with the eggs and the ball. So remember the best way to find out how many are there all together is to count them. So let's count them. One, two, three. So how many things did I have all together? That's right, I have three things all together. So let's make our fraction bar again. And then what number should we put on the bottom? That's right, we should put the number three because we have three things all together. Well, what about, what should we look at on this one? Well, let's look at the plastic eggs. Let's find out how many plastic eggs are in my group by counting them. Ready? One, two. So how many plastic eggs were there? That's right, there are two all together. So my top number is going to be two. So that means I have, I'm looking at two things out of a group of three. Let's practice some fractions with using some shapes. Let's go ahead and draw a rectangle and let's divide it up into this many parts and we'll make our fraction bar underneath. So let's take a look at our rectangle and how many pieces of our rectangle are there? Remember the best way to find out is to count them. So let's count them, ready? One, two, three. So there are three parts to my rectangle. What if I shaded this part and I shade this part? Let's just look at the parts that are shaded. How many parts are shaded? Well, remember the best way to find out is to count them. So let's count them, ready? One, two. So how many parts are shaded? That's right, two. So what number goes on top? Right, the number two. Nice. That is excellent so far. Let's erase this rectangle and we'll do one more. Let's draw a circle this time. And I'm going to divide my circle into this many parts. So let's draw our fraction bar and how many parts of my circle do I have? Well, remember the best way to find out is to count them. So let's count them. Ready? One, two, three, four. So what number goes on the bottom? That's right, four goes on the bottom because we have four parts. And what if I were to shade this one? and shade this one. Now, how many parts are shaded? Hmm. Well, remember the best way to find out is to count them. So let's count them. One, two. So how many parts are shaded? That's right, two. So what number goes on top? That's right, the number two. So remember, when we're looking at fractions, the bottom number is how many are in our group and all, and our top number is going to be how many pieces we're looking at, or how many we care about, or how many are shaded. Thank you so much for tuning in today to the channel. I can't wait to talk more about fractions, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.